There are many reasons why you should use dynamic equalization to get a better mix, and with Frequency 2, there are now no reasons why you shouldn't. Each of its eight bands can be individually set to dynamic mode, making the filter node dependent on the input signal for amazingly precise dynamic mixing. And even better, Cubase 11 allows you to set a different sidechain for each band by making use of the multiple sidechain architecture of VST3. Let's take a look. In order to show you the power of Frequency 2, I've prepared a very simple track right here so that you can hear how you can enhance your tracks, you can also resolve problems, you can use Frequency 2 for de for decluttering your mix, and you can use it on pretty much everything from single tracks to mastering. So let's get started, let's listen to this track. So as you can hear, we can improve quite a few things. We need to declutter our mix, we need to make the vocals stand out, maybe there's a little bit of sibilance on the vocals that we can tame. Why don't we start with the vocals actually? Let me solo the vocals and I'm going to load a brand new instance of Frequency 2. Now let's listen to this. Let's see where I am and when we met. The first thing I might want to do is clean up the vocals. Maybe I want to add a nice low cut filter like that. And maybe the next thing I want to do is I want to ever so slightly tame those S's, tame those sibilants. Now because Frequency 2 is a dynamic EQ now, that means that I can go and activate a band. Maybe I can activate band number 7. I can find the S's. Let's click on this audition icon. It's in a way I am and when we met. It's right here. Your chest is where I choose. As you can see, they occupy a wide range of frequencies, so frequency 2 will work wonders with this. So let me show you. Now all I need to do is activate the dynamic section of this band. And if I want to have a better look at this, I can go to single view, and now I can see that I have my dynamic settings right here. Okay, so now I can set up my threshold, I can set up my ratio, my attack, my release, how fast the dynamic EQ is going to react. So I could probably pull this down, but this would make my entire vocal a little bit darker, right? Instead, now that we have the dynamics EQ, we will only get the gain reduction when those frequencies are over the threshold level. So let's set up a higher ratio. Now let's play it and let's see how frequency two tames those S's. It's in where I am and when we met Your chest is where I choose Now that I've tamed those S's, maybe I can use band 8 and add a nice high shelf EQ to make these vocals stand out a little bit more to give them some sheen. Okay, let's listen to this. It's in where I am and when we met your chest is where I choose. Very nice. So now maybe I want to clean up those low mids for these vocals. So let's grab a band three here and let's see where we have a little bit of these muddy frequencies. It's in where I am and when we met. Your chest is where I choose. Yes, maybe I want to tame this frequency right here, but I don't want to get rid of those frequencies altogether. I just want to have a little bit of attenuation when they become a little bit boomy, right? So maybe I can keep this where it is. I can turn my band free into dynamic EQ around 6 dBs, and now I'm going to set up my threshold. But your chest is where I choose. It's in where I am and when we met Your chest is where I choose Now these vocals sound so much better now. Let's move on to the drums. I'm going to add frequency for my drums here and now I'm going to enhance a little bit of the transients of the drums. Let's try that. Maybe I want to enhance the knock of the kick drum here, and maybe the snares around here. 
but I only want to add a little bit of transient enhancement. So the way to do this is again, use a dynamic EQ. So I can go to band two, turn it into dynamic mode. Let's go and see what we can do. Now I'm going to add, let's say five dBs and I'm going to set my threshold. And now because I have the attack and release, I can say, I want my dynamic EQ to act really fast. And the same thing I want for my band five. Now let's listen with and without. So this is a little bit different to just EQing those bands. It actually gives a little bit of a dynamic response to the EQ and it actually enhances the transients. Now let's go and do something else. Let's go and make sure that we clean up our low end, okay? And maybe our mids as well. So I have this really thick pad here from Retrolog. As you can see, I have quite a bit of low mids here and a lot of mid information. Now, if I play this against my lo-fi bass here, and I can actually use this one as a reference, we will see that the bass clashes a little bit with the pad. So let me show you what we can do to remedy this. I can go to my pad here and I can add a frequency EQ. And this time I can use the multiple sidechain options. Now, one thing that I could do would be to filter this pad. But if you pay attention to the arrangement, you will see that we have the pad right here and we have big pauses for the bass. So that would mean that I would make my pad a little bit weak and when the bass wouldn't play, I would have my song collapse because I wouldn't have any low end and no low mids, okay? Instead, what I can do is I can go here, go to band number one, activate the dynamic EQ, and set this to low shelf. And now what I can do is I can go like this and I can sidechain this to my sub bass. So let's do this. I'm going to activate sidechain. I'm going to click on this cogwheel and I'm going to add my bass to the sidechain. And this is going to be sidechain number one. But hold this thought because we can add more sources for sidechain. I'm gonna show you. Now, once I do this, you will see that when the bass hits, I'm going to get a nice low end and low mid reduction for my pad. Let's do that. Now all I need to do is switch my sidechain input from internal to sidechain one, which is my sub bass. And now check what happens when the bass hits, okay? So what happens is when the bass hits, the low mids of my pad get ducked, okay? They get compressed, but when the bass disappears, everything comes back. So we keep this nice low mid warmth, okay? And of course I can change the release if I want to make it a little bit smoother. Let's do that. Or I can make it super long. So it's sounding very natural and sometimes this is better than completely removing the low mids and the low end from my pad, okay? Now, another thing that might clash with this pad is these vocals, okay? They occupy a lot of the same frequencies. Now, check what you can do. I can go, let's say, to my vocal range, which is around here, okay? And I can turn this band to a dynamic band. Now, I want to sidechain this band to my vocals. So what I can do is I can go again to my sidechain routing and add a second sidechain source. So this is sidechain source number two. And in this case, I'm going to add the vocals as my source. And now all I need to do is set this to sidechain two, and now my vocals are going to trigger band number five. So I have my sub bass triggering band number one, and my vocals triggering 
band number five. Let's see how this sounds. Your chest is where I choose Between where I am and when we met Your chest is where I choose See how much better the vocals cut through this pad? So now let's listen to what a difference just three instances of frequency 2 in dynamic mode can make to our mix. So as you can see, the low end cleans up, everything is a little bit more focused, the low mids get more compact, and this pad can really shine when we need it to, so the low mids come up when we don't have the bass, the vocals are always in focus, and the drums have a little bit more definition. So as you can see, Frequency 2 with a new dynamics mode and multiple sidechain inputs offer a ton of sound sculpting possibilities, whether you want to just enhance your tracks or fix issues with them. It's in 